everyone is fighting some battle uh, of their life that you don't know about, right? And um, it, whether it's you at that time as a founder, um, but also probably for your customers, probably also for your investors, right? Probably also for your co-founders or your teammates. They're trying to figure out something of their own. I guess for me, when I put that into perspective that you know, everyone is kind of the, the hero of their own story and everyone is fighting some battle that you don't know about, uh, you kind of realize that, you know, my problem is just a, it's just a problem. Uh, and I just need to kind of, it's not like I'm the only one and the whole world is against me. Everyone is kind of, you know, uh, trying to figure it out. And uh, it helps me kind of just, ah. you know, put into the mindset of, you know, we just need to keep, keep at it. It's, life is hard, but uh, everyone around you is also trying to struggling and making mistakes and figuring it out. I say to founders out there, two things with that. One is if you feel strongly about something, don't be afraid, even if other people, I mean, you listen to other people and you give what they're saying weight so that you can judge, but you are the decider. And it's always best for you to trust your own instincts since you're gonna be the one who's pushing this forward, you know, this business forward day to day. And I really stuck by that and I'm so happy I did. And then another thing was we designed our, the original Farewelling logo and, you know, we got it. And I was just like, I just, I don't love it. And then I was just like, well, we already have it. We paid for it. I got to just go with it. And it wasn't the current logo that you're seeing there right now. And eventually one of our other advisors, this doesn't feel like what you told me about when we first talked about what Farewelling would be. And I was like, you know what? You're right. He's like, I don't care how much it costs. You should redo it right now and get it to something you just love that you're going to see every day. And it's going to make you smile. I want to leave this. Give yourself grace and don't try to emulate anyone else. I know this is something that you probably have heard a million times, but as human beings, we look at everyone's progress and we look at everyone's highlight reel and then we compare ourselves and we're like, okay, why am I not getting this? Why am I not hitting that? But if you're consistent and you tap a into what I said, your value, like what is it you want to bring to the market? What is it you want to contribute to the world? I promise you, you're going to see the results that you want. Just keep going, but don't, don't compare yourself. It's easy, said and done, but try as much as you can to just put on those blinders and tap into your value add. Every single time you feel as though you're questioning yourself, Ask yourself, okay, what do I want to see? What is my voice? What is my contribution? And I promise you, you'll get the results that you want. Our value proposition is, is clear. For investors, we help them make higher returns. It's as easy as that because we, we know uh, female founders and diverse teams are 63% more profitable. And in year 2020, female founders' um, exit value went up 30% while uh, male-led exit value dropped 44%. And so, and I love spewing out these figures because it's, it's just, you can't argue with, with facts. When I started at fundraising, oh boy, the reality really kicked in. And, and then I, I really got firsthand ex personal experience on how difficult it is for female founders to raise, um, how difficult it is for non-white female founders to raise. The lack of acknowledgement we get, um, the lack of uh, credit we get. It, it took me double meeting, double uh, the number of meetings with investors than the average uh, meetings it, it took, investor meetings it took to close the C round. On average, it's 36 meetings. It took me almost 80, almost 80 meetings with investors.